So energy starts at infinity, slows to light um, at 90 degrees, then increases in speed to antinode of 180 degrees. Planet, uh, oops, 180 degrees of planet. Then it returns as the reflection, getting slower to the light at 270 degrees, and again speeding faster than light to transmitter tower for increasing energy, 360 degrees. And so in mathematics, the cosecant wave is a uh, uh, inverse of the sine wave. And so yeah, like the sine wave, this is what a sine wave looks like. So you're at 0 degrees, 9 degrees, 180, 270, and 360, and it's a cycle. And that's what's happening on the Earth, is uh, I don't have the picture, but the energy's going from there to the other side and back in a cycle. And um, so now... Uh, now you do the invert or the inverse of the um, sine wave, and you get these types of waves that set up, and these are cosecant waves. And because it's an inverse, it's the opposite wave. So the wave would be up here about like zero degrees is infinity because this line is just going way up into infinity. And then as it's coming down, we're getting closer to the equator on the Earth, and we hit 90 degrees. And so right here would be 300,000 kilometers a second, which is the speed of light approximately. And so from here, you're going again. Now you're going past the equator, and you're going faster to the other side of the Earth. And now you hit infinity again, because this line would just keep going up. And infinity, that would be 180 degrees. And now the cycle's returning. So now you're on the other side of the Earth, and it's coming back. And now it's going higher, 190, 200, and then you get to 270. And again, you're at the speed of light in the equator. And now you're almost through the cycle. And now through here, again, it speeds up again. And then it goes to infinity, you know, it would be like right off the page at 360 degrees. And 360 degrees is like being at zero degrees, so again you're at infinity. And then the cycle returns again, you know, slows down, speeds up, and yeah, speeds up, slows down, speeds up, speeds up, slows down. And, you know, that's what keeps happening. And every time you're putting energy into the wave, but that's how you explain the cosecant wave and how math shows it on a picture. Um... Yeah, that's part. That's that part. And um, yeah, like a sine wave, AC power, 60 cycles, and you know, like if you uh, um, like hook it up to the um, the power mains. You know, of course, you have to be careful and use the right equipment. But um, you can see the 60 cycles wave, and it's it's like a pure sine wave. Um, so now now we get to interplanetary transfer part, and uh, to do something like this, we need a much larger tower. From what he was saying, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000, I don't really know how big, but it would be a lot bigger than Warrencliffe. Um, if Warrencliffe was built, Niagara Falls would have given Tesla the energy for a much larger tower at the Niagara Falls site. The Niagara Falls site would have secured unlimited energy for the Earth, um, water power, larger tower, more energy to put into the resonant waves. So, you know, we've been energy efficient till the end of the earth d disappears um, now I said would the Niagara Falls site be able to transfer energy through the vacuum of space to other planets possibly but I think it would be an even larger tower it would need to be built and built by all countries probably because of the price of it like what they're doing with the CERN particle accelerator uh, and then communication would be easy you wouldn't need the massive tower but you could communicate uh, through space using like uh, even just the Warrencliffe Tower type tower and so and so let's look at interplanetary energy transfer and so I just show the magnifying transmitter on the earth Niagara Falls you know giving off like pretty much unlimited energy as long as the sun's here and everything and then um, so now we look as if energy is being transferred to the moon or even Mars and so that will be the next part so over the years of Tesla's uh, work, he talks every so often about interplanetary energy transfer and his articles where he says, oh, we could probably transfer millions of horsepower to the moon and such, and then now he's setting up industry throughout the universe in a, a way. And so the first part where he starts talking about this type of idea is um, in the Inventions, Researches, and Writings of Nikola Tesla by Thomas Comfort Martin. What that book is is just a um, collection of everything Tesla did. And it's probably a good book for anyone who's really interested in the scientific intelligence of Tesla because it's just so smart how he explains things. So when the teacher says he was a quack or anything, just show him this book and they'll shut they'll shut up. <laughs> so uh, um, like so Tesla did electrostatics and that was the main thing and it's almost like its own science in itself and we don't really even 
talk about it as much now. But what he said in a few phrases in one of the writings that he had in this book, um, that at the beginning of time, pretty much, like well, when things started being made, mechanical action of matter breaking away from itself should have left a capacitive effect on the planets and moons at the start of planets and stars. So, like, when things broke away, um, you know, mechanical action would have pulled pulled the charges away, you know, like how you do static electricity and you rub your foot on the rug, you're pulling the charges away onto yourself. And now, because there's a vacuum of space, the charges are um, separated from each other. And now there's, he's saying that there's probably an electrostatic charge or a capacitive charge on the planet Earth, the moon, on anything, pretty much. And so he also said, looking at the universe astronomically, the Earth and solar system are very close. This is like us looking at the atoms and mo molecules being very close in reference to ourselves. So, you know, like, you look through the telescope, everything, you know, you know, of course, is millions of miles away, but when you look at it as if the, the whole picture, everything's really close, like, you know, molecules. So, um, he also said, disturbing the Earth, electrostatic could cause <clears throat> services throughout, um, throughout it, and resonance makes the stronger effect. And so, that's all he's just saying here is, um, one day when he makes the Colorado Springs a Warncliffe Tower, he disturbed the electrostatics of the Earth and sent the energy through it to all points. And this is this is before he did everything. This is like 1889 uh, or something like that, around when he was demonstrating the one wire principle. So he predicted his future right there because he ended up doing that and sent energy through the Earth. And so the other thing he said, changing Earth's electrostatic effect and capacitance should disturb surrounding moons, planets, and matter in space. And then, uh, I mean, he doesn't fully say it right there, but it could mean industrial energy could be sent this way by fluctuating Earth's capacitance in space. And then also in the patent, if you remember when I said it in the patent, he says lower than 6 hertz allows Earth capacitive storage. And, um, you know, like, that kind of makes sense now. If you're changing the whole, you're going so slow with the frequency that you're changing the Earth's capacity. And you're probably charging it to a potential, you know, either a positive or a negative. And because of that, the planets around it are probably going to try to change the opposite polarity, like a capacitor. And that's what I show here, like, you know, a capacitor in a vacuum, and now just like planets, positive, you know, maybe making a positive effect to make the negative effect on the moon, say. And uh, uh, an important concept to prove this type of theory is Colorado Springs Tesla discovery capacitance on objects. Um, I mean, the capacitance changes the object, like the sphere would change its capacitance because of objects near it, like the building. He said that when the building there, it would actually change the capacitance substantially to make the readings, uh, you know, not scientific. So we had to sometimes move the tower or, you know, move uh, coils around away from the building to only show the effect of capacitance on the Earth. And so, as I'm saying here, is uh, objects, uh, discovered capacitance changes on objects near other objects, buildings, and distance from the Earth, so height. So uh, another important point here is Tesla detected intelligent signals coming from space that were extremely different than the solar and atmospheric effects he detected before. And you know he's talked about these pulses that were hitting the Earth, and he never heard them before. And he's listened for years, you know, listened through these uh, low frequency devices, and then. He kind of came to the conclusion that it's probably something else out there, like another intelligent civilization trying to send these low frequency pulses to, you know, change the signs probably to, you know, give us instant communication probably through the universe. And um, I believe that kind of shows the proof of concept, maybe. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's that. Uh, so, you know, like the capacitance, and maybe this, that's how it would work. And it's just interesting, he talks about these signals, and, you know, it makes you wonder, like, what are those signals? Some people say it's pulsars or these big um, cosmic events, but, you know, what if, because these low frequencies, it's some type of other um, information transfer or energy transfer? So it's really interesting. So, yeah, the next video, I'll keep talking more about this.